Our stock of the hour, McDonald's has reportedly closed offices for a few days this week as it plans layoffs as part of a broader restructuring plan. The shares have been trading around an all-time high. I want to bring in Michael Halen, who is uh, with the Bloomberg Intelligence team, where he serves as a senior restaurant analyst. Michael, it is interesting that, that the stock, I mean, there's all these reasons why investors have been gravitating towards McDonald's in recent days. Uh, given that there's some, some, some decent performance for the business itself, what was your reaction to these reports about the layoffs yeah so these layoffs have been pretty well communicated to the street right we, they outlined them um, back in, in January so uh, it's not a huge surprise for investors today you know I think when the news first came across the wires uh, you know th there was that question why now M McDonald's has been absolutely knocking the cover off the ball uh, obviously there was some margin pressure for the corporate owned stores and the franchisees last year but when it comes to the top line uh, McDonald's has done a phenomenal job um, you know you have to think that you know in the back of their head they're, they're expecting things to get worse and, and they, they've been pretty clear with their communication about that as well so uh, you know on the last earnings call they said a mild to a moderate recession in the US was their base case they think it's going to be uh, even worse in Europe uh, because of, of uh, the inflation that they're seeing here in the first half so um, I, I think it kind of jives right they think things are going to get worse here for the economy and, and, and that's why they're looking to, to cut some some jobs. Michael, put this into perspective for us. When we talk about, I think what was most striking to me about the story is that they're shutting down their corporate offices to execute these layoffs. But put this into context for us about previous rounds or previous uh, layoffs or restructurings that McDonald's has dealt with. Is this bigger or smaller than what we've seen in the past? Yeah, well, personally, I'd like to uh, be, be known. Uh, I'd, I'd like to know that I was getting uh, let go uh, in, in a face-to-face -face meeting personally. But, you know, I think this is just kind of a sign of the times, right? People are working from home. They're doing the Zoom thing. Uh, in terms of the size of this, uh, we don't know. They, ha they haven't told us yet what the number of, of cuts uh, are going to be. So, so we're, uh, you know, we're hoping to hear something on the uh, first quarter earnings call coming up. Michael, just on that, you know, reality of technology and how it allows people to do business these days, I mean, part of the McDonald's business itself is increasingly ruled by the digital component of their business. And I wonder if the company is going to increasingly just sort of follow on what Cordy was saying, thinking about how technology is continuing to change the way all of their businesses run. Yeah, for sure. I mean, obviously, um, restaurants have caught up quick on technology over the, over the last several years. Um, they were forced to by COVID, right? It's an industry that, that was uh, kind of behind when it came to technology, um, you know, com compared to most other consumer companies um, that we follow. So, um, yeah, technology is going to continue to be important. Um, you know, what I could say for the restaurant space is, is kind of unique. You know, um, for the restaurant employees, they have to go into work. There's no working from home. There's no telecommuting, right? So so I think a lot of the restaurants that we cover uh, and people that we talk to, they've, they felt it was important that their employees do come in on, on a day-to-day -day basis because uh, they don't want to be seen as, as kind of like uh, a different class of citizen uh, from their employees, right? So I, I think restaurant uh, chains in, in general have, have approached telecommuting uh, a little bit differently than, than some of the other industries out there. Shalom, 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 all praises to the Most High, Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, that is, in the name of His only begotten Son, Yahweh Shai, who the world ignorantly calls Jesus, a so-called black man. McDonald's and others are laying off employees. McDonald's and others, such as Disney, Twitter, and others are laying off and have laid off others. And this is the sign of the times. And it's projected that Disney is expected to lay off 7,000 7, employees. So you see in the trickle effect, the trickle down effect from these, what they would call white collar career jobs to eventually it's gonna get down to the blue collar jobs. So you saw a mass layoff in the, what do you call it, the uh, tech sector. 
you seeing layoffs from the office sector and this uh, latest layoff from McDonald's from the corporate uh, uh, perspective is going to eventually trickle down to the employees. And so, except for the employees not going to have the courtesy of getting the email and telling them to not show up to work. They're going to have to come in to work and get the news face to face if they even do come in to show up to work. Because we know that through this automation, they are looking to replace, you know, people with a more proficient source of energy, that being, in their eyes, you know, machines. You see it all the time. Self-checkout registers. You're going to see these fast food restaurants where they only need a minimum number of people to run the everyday day-to-day -day basis so they can use machines like to flip the uh, fries i mean to flip the burgers and to cook the fries and stuff like that so you seeing this place incrementally what disintegrate and f fade away incrementally you see in your your local banks you see the the bank tellers they're not as prominent as they once were. You used to walk into the bank and can see like six or seven or eight, you know, bank tellers working at one time. Now you may go in there and see only one or two because we coming into a time where the need for work is no longer going to be needed. The need for employees to work are no longer going to be needed because they are trying to starve out the economy. So by downgrading and laying off employees that's going to further push this economy into a, a bigger recession because people aren't going to have enough money to make you know ends meet with these high interest rates which is another way how they see to f uh, fight inflation because once you raise the interest rates so high people can't afford things which in return will stop the spending and them having to print more and more money, which is going to raise inflation. So by laying off people and raising the interest rates up, they can try to combat inflation. But this whole thing is based on debt and they can't fight debt because debt continuously grow year in and year out through principal and other uh, mechanisms of, you know, interest. So at this point, they just got to, you know, pull the plug on this place, man. So you're going to see mass layoffs in the upcoming, you know, weeks, months. Who knows how long we have until they completely pull the plug on this uh, dollar. So, you know... You seeing it right before your eyes. McDonald's is laying off employees. And that even though that's at the corporate level, you know it's gonna trickle down to the regular employees that come in day in and day out, that works a nine to five or nine to nine, or however many hours they work, an hourly employee, as opposed to a salary corporate uh employee. So you see in this first hand, and this is just a a, a sign of the times, man, that we get ready to come closer to the to the to the end of this man rulership. You know, we get ready to come into Jacob's trouble, where it's gonna be, you know, it's gonna be real out there. People are gonna be struggling and fighting, you know, just to get a piece of the bread. So, you know, this is the time to use your time wisely and to stay into this word, this truth, and have the, have that hedge put around you in these times that we get ready to come into because it's spoken of in Jacob's trouble you know this is going to be a time like there's no other time on the earth man so you're going to see a lot of people once they have nothing to lose they're going to go all out and it's going to be complete chaos and that's going to be the perfect storm for them to roll out that mark which they can you know program people to have enough money to come back all the chaos that's going on throughout the throughout the world because 
there's no, there's a lack of bread in Egypt. There's no, you know, jobs to be had in Egypt because they all have been taken by machines and people are just going to be trying to survive basically. And that's all by design. You know, we're going to get scriptures showing you that. So this is the, <laughs> this is the time that you have right now to get your, to get your affairs in order because once all hell breaks loose, it's going to be too late. You're not going to have any kind of way to know what's going on because the word is going to be retrieved. That's going to be the famine of the word. And you're going to have the mark that's going on. And then you're going to have World War III popping off. And then you ain't going to know what's next because you don't have anyone to tell you, to show you. And by that time, it's going to be too late. Like you say, he's coming like a thief in the night. So if you're not prepared and ready when he comes, that's it for you. So you're getting it first hand right now so you can be prepared for that time. So this is the book of Isaiah chapter 19 and we're going to, and we're going to go down to verse 14 and it reads Yahweh hath mingled a perverse spirit in the midst thereof and they have caused Egypt to err in every work thereof as a drunken man staggereth in his vomit neither shall there be any work for Egypt which the head or tail branch or rush may do you see, and we know that America is known as spiritually Egypt, and there's not going to be any work in this place, head or tail. That's your corporate office all the way down to your regular employees, man. There's not going to be any work because they're systematically choking out this economy, man. And the only way you can choke out this economy or one of the ways you choke out this economy is by laying off employees, both in high positions and low positions, through cuts, through uh, major cutoffs, through major layoffs and, and cutbacks. So you're gonna see these CEOs letting go a lot of you know a lot of their employees, you know, for for what reason? For one of for one another reason? Who knows? But you're gonna see a lot of employees gonna be out. <laughs> they're gonna be out in the. Uh, what you call it? They're going to be out in the uh, unemployment market looking for handouts, you know, and it's just going to be convenient when this mark come around that all you got to do is receive it and get yourself back on course. So, you know, you're seeing some real times coming up, coming up ahead right now. You know, you're seeing these things being projected, you know, in the media, in the you know, in the news, on social platform, social media platforms, you know, this is a good sign to to uh, show that you need to get your affairs in order because McDonald's laying off employees. It's one thing to have like a company in Silicon Valley lay off employees, but once it makes it all the way down to McDonald's, where majority of the mass go to eat to get something real fast and quick you know you would think that you should have plenty of work for employees to have you know some some form of job to do but now you see that they just closed the office for these three days to figure out what they're going to do and they laid off some of the uh corporate employees and you know the regular employees, they probably gonna have to come in face to face to get there. Okay, we we no longer need your assistance anymore. We're going over to 90, 10, 90 percent automation, 10 percent, you know, human workforce. So this is just, you know, speculation, but this is easily, you know, plausible for them to pull something off like this. Because they looking for fast and efficient. Uh, output, you know, so they can have something where, you know, at worst, all they have to do is, you know, come in and have somebody come fix a, a bolt or a, a nook and cranny on a machine as opposed to employees calling in and calling off and not showing up to work on time. The CEO much rather going to see, you know, hiring somebody to come in that can fix a machine that can do the job of, you know, eight or nine people 
as opposed to pay, paying those nine or ten people to come in to work and just play around. You know, so it's not, it's not going to be nothing for the CEO to let go of regular employees sooner or later, which is going to cause this whole thing to spiral out of control. Because what? <laughs> like I said earlier in the beginning, with interest rates being so high, how are you going to be able to find, you know, somewhere to stay? Because rent is going to be going through the roof. Groceries are going to be going through the roof. Gas prices are going to be going through the roof. You know, who knows how long the interest rates going to continue to raise and raise before they start to lower it down. It may be sometime next year. They may be syncing it up with the 2024 uh, president, uh, can, uh, president uh, election. So who knows, you know, all we know is to be in this word, stay in this truth. So we'll have that hedge for whatever, you know, outcome it may be. So like I said, Yahweh has mingled a perverse spirit, you know, and that's what he's putting on right now for all these people who don't take heed and listen and know what's going on. They're going to be caught up in that fowler's net that we talked about yesterday. They're gonna be caught up in that foul of snare as the uh as the birds, man. So let's go into Second Thessalonians and get a insight of that perverse spirit. That that Yahweh have mingled a perverse spirit in the mindset thereof. Second Thessalonians. Chapter 2, verse 9. And it reads, Even him whose coming is after the working of Satan with all power and signs and lying wonders. And we know that's Esau Edom, man, the son of perdition. He's going to give you, you know, lying wonders. He's going to tell you, oh, you know, if you get this or if you take that, you know, everything's going to be all right. You know, everything's going to be back to normal and with all deceivableness of unrighteousness in them that perish because they receive not the love of the truth that they might be saved. So you having an opportunity to receive the truth, you know, to know what's going on with times we getting ready to come into that. What you seeing ain't by sheer coincidence. It's all prophecy. It's all prophesied. So you should be taking your time to do your due diligence and, and study so you'll be prepared and keeping in this word so you have a hedge when all hell breaks loose, man, once Jacob troubles come. Because by that time, like I said, it's going to be too late. The famine on the word going to be like, hey, you ain't going to know what to do because he's going to withdraw his word. Like it's spoken of in, in uh, Amos the eighth chapter, the famine of the word. So it says, and for this cause, Shall, and for this cause, the Most High shall send them a strong delusion. So this is that, you know, uh, mingle perverse spirit, man. You're going to have that strong delusion on you. You're going to believe everything that you're seeing and hearing about on the news, on these social media platforms, or just about, you know, wherever you head in the streets at. You're not going to know exactly what's going on. You're not going to have a clue to what's really going on. You're going to be caught up in these streets. You know, oh man, you're going to hear people talking, oh, how am I going to pay my rent? Oh, gas prices are so high, we can't afford gas prices. You're going to see people walking into the store, the grocery store is mad as hell at these prices, these outrageous prices that just a few days ago were bearable, but now they're unbearable. You're going to see people just spazzing out, man. You know, they gonna be they gonna be under that strong delusion, man. That that uh that spirit, that mingled perverse spirit. They ain't gonna know what's going on. See, because when they had a time to take heed, they didn't. They continued on about their everyday life like it was nothing to it. So now they being caught. Now they caught with a proverbial with a uh proverbial proverbial uh hand in the cookie jar. So now they don't know what to do. They stuck. Now they got to go down to Egypt for, for that help, you know? So it says, and for this cause, the Most High shall send them a strong delusion 
and they should believe a lie. And they're going to believe that lie that Egypt is going to tell them that now we have the solution for you, for all this chaos, these high interest rates, you know, people being out of jobs, people not having work. Now you can come and receive this mark, this universal basic income. This, thing's ha this thing has programmable money for you for assistance, especially all the people that's already on government assistance. They're going to be they're going to have to go down and get this. But then you're going to have people that's not on government assistance that just being laid off, you know, and looking just to get ends meet. A little bit extra money just to get, you know, just to make ends meet. Because they ain't got no job. They've been laid off. You see from the corporate, from the head, up up at the top, down to the bottom, to the tail. There ain't going to be no more work here in Egypt. And that's all by design. So they can starve out the economy and get you to come down for the, what? The solution, you know? So you seeing this all take place right in front of your very own eyes, you know? Hopefully, you know, you repent and turn back to the true and living power of Yahweh by Hashem through the name of his only begotten son, Yahweh Shai, because he's the only one that's going to deliver us throughout, throughout all these, throughout all this madness that's getting ready to come to this land, man. And eventually those, uh, those ICBM missiles, man. So this is the time for us to really get into this word. To get this hedge to put on us for when all hell breaks out, and we we get closer and closer to that to that time. It's no turning back. Esau Edom know he's only he only has but a short time, so he got to keep this thing moving forward to push his agenda until he get as many as he can before the second coming of the Savior of our Lord and Savior Yahweh comes back to put him in chains. You know, so. This was uh, just a, you know, faith booster to keep you, you know, in good spirits that we all most up out of here. So we're going to close out in uh, Second Peter's and we're going to take it from there. First Peter, I meant to say. So this is First Peter 5 and going down to verse 8 where it reads, be sober, be vigilant. Because your adversary, the devil, as a roaring lion, walk up about seeking whom he may devour. And he has different ways of devouring his prey. You know, fear is his best, or one of his best tactics is to pump fear into you to believe that you need to rely solely on what he's selling you and telling you for your best interest. When he has, he doesn't have your best interest at heart, you know. He just looks as he just look looks at you as a potential target or a prey that he can devour and put into his belly. So you need to be sober and be vigilant so you can see these things and avoid his snares. You know, so with that being said, stay strong, stay in the faith. We almost home. Shalom.